Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us uh, here today. Uh, I'm Patrick Dean, Principal of Queen's, and delighted uh, to welcome everyone here. Uh, and to begin, as is our custom, by stating that even though we are meeting today virtually uh, from many different uh, locations via technology, Queen's University is situated on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe. We're grateful to be able to live, learn, work and to play on these lands. Today you'll hear from some United Way agency partners about how your donations through our campaign are helping them to address some of the very critical needs uh, being experienced in our communities right now, specifically in how they're helping people to access food. This is the third in a series of four Lunch and Learn speaker events we're holding during the campaign next week at the same time, we'll be hearing from agencies involved in helping women and in particular, how local agencies are helping them to become more resilient and confident in dealing with some of the tremendous challenges faced by women in our community. These events help everyone learn about the work being done in that community and the needs that exist and that are being felt even more acutely uh, now during the pandemic. And that's just one way we're helping to raise awareness of the United Way and the Queen's United Way campaign. Our Queen's community is very generous and a leader uh, within our community. Our goal of $300,179 is just over 10% of the entire community campaign goal of 2.9 million. We're the largest workplace and retiree campaign in Eastern Ontario. And I want to thank everyone who has donated and supported United Way through the campaign uh, so far. Uh, throughout my career, I've been a supporter of United Way, uh, very committed and uh, very privileged this year to be serving on the United Way campaign cabinet as the co-chair of the education sector. Uh, and really pleased and grateful for friends and colleagues to join me in support of the United Way this year again. We will share the link to our next event so that you can add it to, to your calendar. And also we'll share the link to our campaign donation page if you haven't yet made your pledge to the campaign and wish to do so. So you can look for those in the, uh, in the Q&A chat window. Uh, so now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our uh, moderator of the discussion today, Pavna Varma. Uh, Pavna is the CEO and President of the United Way of Kingston, Frontenac, Lennox and Addington. And I'll invite her to share some information uh, with you about our topic and also about our panelists today. Pavna, over to you. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you to everyone in the Queen's community. Your donations have made such a difference, and I really want to thank you. Uh, you'll hear from two of our agencies about the great work that's done as a result of these donations. Uh, but the need is, is, is high. Last year, you helped 59,000 people right here in Kingston, Frontenac, Lennox, and Addington. At the start of the pandemic, we started to find the needs escalate. And just in the first four months, uh, your support has helped 42,000 people right here. Um, what it has been, and it's right across the country, my colleagues tell me, um, we have seen an incredible exponential growth in the need for food. And it's not just in Canada. I just read an article in the New York Times about uh, the states are seeing this huge in increase as well. Food is such a basic need, and it's really challenging for us to think of a community in Canada or right across Canada that people should worry about where the next meal is coming from for themselves but also their children and their families. As soon as the pandemic hit our agency, agency still had to go on because there were people waiting for food. Uh, so March 16th when they closed the doors and March 17th when they opened right away there was this need to serve in a very different way. So our agencies have been incredibly innovative What's really wonderful to see is how collaborative they've been. So in March, starting in March, and it continues now, there is a weekly meeting of all the food meal providers and they get together and they find ways to help each other. Um, when there are big donations between Food Sharing Project and Lionhearts, they find space to store it um, and then distribute it. The need is huge. And I'll just give you an example. Um, before the pandemic, 
we served about 400 to 500 meals a day, a week in Kingston. That was about it. And sometimes they went over the weekend if it was a special weekend. Now they're serving, our agencies are serving 1800 people a day and it's growing. We're also serving uh, in the rural area, especially and locally hampers, we deliver hampers, food boxes. People are really struggling and, and, and people who never thought that they would stand in line for a meal or welcome a food box in their kitchen um, are now finding that they, they need this. And what's amazing is we couldn't do it without the amazing agencies working together, but without your support, because it does take money to support food programs in our community. And it's, it's, it's really heart-wrenching to imagine a family, an individual who never thought they'd go hungry and now suddenly are finding they need to. Certainly those who are on the streets, who are homeless, they've always needed a helping hand in this area. But today I'm going to introduce to you um, a couple of agencies who are serving people who we never thought. Uh, I'll start with Brenda Moore and then with Kathy, we'll talk a little bit about seniors programs because we found that from seniors to students to families, the need is right across the board. So without further ado, Brenda Moore has dedicated her life to being an educator. She's also been on the board of Food Sharing Project for decades. So I'll turn it over to Brenda. Thank you, Pavna. It's my pleasure to talk to you today about the Food Sharing Project and how the United Way supports the work that we do in, in the community and how much it has changed in the last few months. The Food Sharing Project is the organization which provides the breakfast, lunch, and hearty snack programs that happen across KFLNA in 88 elementary and secondary schools. In a typical school year, and I underline that word typical because that's not what we're in this year, but in a typical year, we would serve about 16,000 students, elementary and secondary, which is about half of all the students enrolled in KFLNA. And we would send about $12,000 every week worth of food to schools, and it would be fresh fruit and vegetables, protein, grains, dairy. And that would be going out to our schools every week of the school year. Based on the needs of the students and the availability of volunteers, schools decide what kind of a program they'd like to have. They can start off the day with a sit down breakfast, or they can have uh, classroom bins where there are hearty snacks in the classroom available to children throughout the day or we also do lots of bag lunches and that's very popular in secondary. If anybody has a teenager in the house you know how they absolutely will back away from anything that singles them out so being able to pick up a brown bag lunch and carry it to where your friends are eating uh, is a really key factor. Um, we want kids to be fed at school and we want it to be just part of what happens at school. We don't want anyone to feel any kind of centering out or anything like that. It's just what we know as educators is a really important part of what happens at school because we know that kids don't learn that well if they're hungry. They don't concentrate as well. They don't solve problems as well. They can't handle things on the yard as well without um, having some nourishment. I'm a retired principal and when children came to me, particularly off the schoolyard, one of the things I would say to them is, when was the last time you ate? And if that child responded yesterday, then the first thing we would do is go down to the food sharing project room in my school and I'd get that child something to eat because it, there wasn't any point in trying to solve the problem until that tummy was uh, feeling more full. The students tell us that the fresh food they have at school really makes a difference. Some young children don't understand what that difference is, but they know how it makes them feel. And we've heard stories about children asking their parents for apples like we have at school. And sometimes we forget that it's something as basic as an apple can, can make a difference uh, for a child. A grade five student once told me that he didn't know why, but math was an awful lot easier after he'd had breakfast at school. So they, you know, they recognize it. Secondary kids tell us that the food that they can pick up on the way to class just helps them get there. 
And uh, one um, coordinator shared with us a story that a secondary student told her at, grad at his graduation that if he and his siblings hadn't been fed at school through the food sharing project, he would have had to quit school and get a job to help out with the family finances. And there are an incredible number of families across KFLNA that are struggling with food insecurity. One in eight families currently. And I, actually, I think that's probably a different number now given the numbers with the pandemic. But before the pandemic, it was one in eight families. And those families are struggling to make ends meet. They are invariably working two, sometimes three part-time um, minimum wage jobs. And they're having to make decisions about where their limited income goes. So when we can feed their children at school, then that frees up money for them to pay the rent and the hydro and the gas to get to work. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned, it's not a typical year and we have certainly had a lot of changes. Um, when schools closed at the in the middle of March, we realized right away that the children we fed at school, we just needed to find them at home. And that was a big logistical um, task, but with the help of the school boards, we did that. And we were able to provide 600 families every um, two weeks um, a food box that had the fresh fruit and vegetables and grains and dairy that the children were used to having at school in their home. So that was um, all the from the, um, sorry, from April till the end of August, we did that. And in those boxes were just the basics, but we had one family that let us know they called it their luxury box. And I loved it when I was doing deliveries and the kids would say, is there broccoli in there? And they'd be so excited because there was broccoli. And their parent would look at them like, what? You would never eat broccoli. But they would love to know that there was broccoli in the food box. It was, it was, so, it was so good to know that, that we were able to make the changes that we needed uh, to be able to provide that essential food uh, to families. When we, as food sharing, get a donation, get our grant from the United Way, we take that right to the grocery store, and we're still doing that. We're going right to local grocery stores, we use local suppliers, and that food goes onto the table in a, in a school, because we are running our school programs now, or they go into back into homes, because we are also starting our home delivery service again. And the reason for the home delivery is that we're really um, um, restricted on what we can serve in schools right now. We can't prepare any food, so no bagels with cream cheese, no sandwiches. Everything has to be individually packaged and um, sent out to the kids that way. So that's quite different. It's, uh, we're able to provide very nutritious food, but there's not a lot of what we can provide. So we decided that we would be better able to serve the kids by sending a food box to their home that had breakfast and lunch items in it. And hopefully that will fill up the tummies and, and allow kids to do what um, we ask them to do at school, which is an awful lot. Um, our costs have increased quite a bit because of the, the cost of those individually packaged foods. And we are, we are very grateful that the, we have the support of the United Way. And we see as members of the vulnerable sector group that Pavna mentioned in the beginning, we see the work that's done across our community. And it's with leadership like that provided by the United Way. So a donation to the United Way stays in our community and helps everyone in our community live with a sense of uh, hope, dignity, and a sense of belonging. And that's a really important contribution that the United Way makes for all of us. Thank you so much, Brenda. Great work that your agency does, so keep doing it. Um, one of the things in, at the start of the pandemic was we started to get calls from seniors. Seniors who were isolated, there was one group of seniors where it was they, they just couldn't go out because they could afford groceries, but they were afraid to go out. So we were able to link them with grocery stores and agencies who could help them. But the other was more disturbing. It was seniors who had no money to buy food. 
And so that was when our Retirees United came together. We, had, we were very familiar with the good food box that's provided to people. And we thought, what about creating something for seniors? So KCHC, Kingston Community Health Centers, um, had, uh, uh, had someone design a box that provided nutritious food. And with us today is Kathy, who does an amazing job of coordinating an army of volunteers and drivers and packs these boxes and gets them out. So Kathy, do you want to tell us a little bit about your programs? Thank you, Pavna, and thank you for inviting me today to speak to you about these programs that I'm working on at uh, Kingston Community Health Centers. And we're a partner agency of the United Way KFLNA. Um, as Pavna mentioned, uh, the Senior Food Box. Uh, I thought I'd, uh, first of all, I'd like to just kind of say a few things about food insecurity in general and specifically about post-secondary. Um, in 2019, Meal Exchange, which is based out of Toronto, did a survey, the largest survey in Canada of post-secondary students in regards to food insecurity. And what they found was that 40% uh, of all students experience some degree of food insecurity every month. That is a high number, not, uh, not unsurprising because of the cost associated with going to school. But there is good news on that. Queen's University has been a good food box host site since 2017, helping your students uh, access fruits and vegetables at affordable prices. And starting this week, with the help of United Way KFLNA, um, they have funded a good a student food box. And our first order is going to Queen's Food Bank this week. We're very excited and so pleased to be able to help um, some of your students. And we couldn't do that without the leadership that United Way has shown in addressing all of this food issues that we've all come up against. I've been working in food my whole life I'm very committed to access it, food access for everyone in the community. And uh, United Way has been on board with us and we're so grateful. As Pavna mentioned, the senior food box, uh, it was literally, it came to being because they were fielding a lot of calls at the United Way from seniors that were really struggling to not only just to get outside the isolation part of it, but accessing food on a normal basis uh, with when we met up with Pavna and her group it was easy to fit uh, the senior box into our programming we are now servicing 400 seniors per month access food uh, we deliver to their doors we have a group of amazing volunteers that include United Retirees, Loving Spoonful Volunteers, KCHC Redeployed Staff, amongst others. We've actually had uh, Queen's University hockey team members come and help us out back. So it's just been a huge, like Pavna said, an army of people who have been doing this. It's great for the seniors. They're so grateful. Um, it's surprising and stunning some of the situations they found themselves in. Um, it's just a reality check for all of us who have been in this business for a while to see the need for seniors. It's incredible. Um, but, you know, I want to touch on something that Pavna said, which was, we don't need, they don't just, um, how do I say this? They, uh, so I'm sorry. There is we find ourselves in situations that we weren't ever expecting. And we see that every day when we go to deliver to people. And these, if I may, I just want to tell you a little, a couple of stories that kind of, you know, epitomize this. The senior food box, when we first started talking about it, it was a decision that was made jointly that we look at seniors as 55 plus as opposed to 65. That really helped quite a few people that fell through the cracks. 55-year-olds um, don't have a lot of the supports that seniors have if you're over 65. And this person that I met up with, I was delivering one day, 
said to me, came to the door and said how much they appreciated this program. They were 55, had had a job there most of their lives, a good job, and had run into medical problems when they were in their midlife. Now finds themselves on ODSP and couch surfing, homeless, had moved twice during the time since April um, because they don't have a, a real place to stay. They told me how much they appreciated, how much they felt included. This was something they hadn't experienced before during this period in their lives. It meant more than just the food. It was the food. It was important to them to have the food. But it was so important that they were being included and that they were part of the community because of the outreach that United Way was allowing to happen. And we were there to help facilitate that. Um, I see this person every single month. They love to tell me their story as to how they're moving forward. Um, they're more stable in their housing accommodations now, which is terrific um, because it's just so important to have those little basic things that some of the seniors really don't have. And uh, we've tapped into that need within the community and we're, I'm surprised by the need. I think we all were, and we're so grateful and thank you for uh, helping that happen. So there was someone who didn't feel that they were going to be a part, they didn't think this was ever gonna happen to them in their lives but they found themselves there. And thanks to these type of programs, they were easy to uh, find us, contacted United Way, got set up, and now know that every month that somebody is gonna come to their door, give them some nutritious food and a, ha and a happy face to talk to under a mask. And uh, so they have that connection as well as the food. The other one I wanted to, just kind of briefly mentioned was a good food box recipient. And again, it's someone who didn't feel that they were included in these kind of things. We're not here to make any of those calls on people. We're just there to help them access these programs. This person called, got set up for the good food box and then called me while I was on the road delivering to say thank you, how much her family appreciated it how excited the kids were to get it. And I said, thank you, you just made my day. She called me back the next day and said, I never asked you, was there something going wrong in your day? And I said, no, there wasn't. I was just, it's just nice to hear that people appreciate this project. And she started to cry and she cried because she said she had a beautiful home she had six children, one of whom was disabled, a restraining order against her partner, her ex-partner. So her life was in such turmoil, but because she was living in this nice home, she felt that everyone was gonna judge her and say, you don't need this. Because we don't know what people's stories are. We're not there to make those calls on people. And like Padma said, they never expected they would find themselves here. And this is where they are right now. And because of United Way and, and Brenda and everybody that's working on food access and all of the other amazing projects that United Way funds, we've allowed people to feel included, to be a part of the community, to know that they're welcome, that we're not making any calls on them, that we're just here to say, we're here, we're here, we're listening, and we got your back. And uh, so I think that's about all I have to say. I do wanna thank you very much for your support of the United Way. Without your support, their leadership can't uh, help us. We're the boots on the ground and uh, it's their leadership that has made this happen. And of course, their leadership starts with all of you. So again, thanks for listening and inviting me and um, I, will, I will keep uh, delivering food to people. Thank you for all you do, Kathy. It's amazing. Um, quick, someone had a quick question. What's in a good food box? Would you wanna just quickly tell people? Yeah, 
uh, the Good Food Box is uh, fruits and vegetables. We source from uh, Tony Diodato's and Son. And uh, the, we have, and, and I should mention, the Student Food Box is a new program with the United Way. And that uh, you can access through the food bank at Queens. Uh, and that is for anyone who is struggling financially right now to put food on the table. So that box will include fruits, vegetables, as well as a selection of dry goods. And uh, you're welcome, the students are welcome to use that twice a month. It'll be the second and fourth weeks of the month. And that's uh, again, through the food bank. The senior food box is very similar to that. It's a selection of uh, fruits and vegetables as well as dry goods. And the good food box is just fruits and vegetables. We source it all locally uh, through Tony Diodato and Sons for the Produce and Grants No Frills, who is great supporters of both of these programs. Thank you, Kathy. I'll turn that back to you, Patrick, if um, you'd like to wrap up. And thanks, Brenda. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks very much, Pavna. Uh, and thank you to, to Brenda and Kathy for those two presentations really helpful to understand what it looks like on the ground and the kind of work that's being done by, by, by both of your agencies. It's, uh, it's been very enlightening, uh, the, the session today. We really appreciate your experience uh, and, and the expertise that you, you bring to our discussion uh, of these issues. Thanks, Pavna, to you for moderating. Uh, a splendid job, as always. And thank you everyone for joining us today and we uh, hope you'll join us next week for the next in this series. Have a very good day, everybody. Bye-bye.